If you've ever gone shopping for art supplies, then you know there is a wide variety of prizes out there. Of course, this is based on the quality and longevity of the supplies themselves. If you've been in the market for gouache paints and have been debating on whether or not to go with something a bit more affordable or to splurge on the good stuff, today's video is hopefully going to help you make your decision. Well, hello there. As you probably know from the video's title, we are going to be testing Arteza gouache versus Winsor & Newton designer's gouache today. Just to give you an idea, on Amazon, a pack of 24 tubes of Arteza gouache goes for $23. They also offer smaller packs of 12 tubes for around $10. The pack of Winsor & Newton designer's gouache I'll be using today is called their primary set of six tubes, which costs $36.50. And if you want a wider range of colors, their introductory set of 10 comes out to a whopping $63. Now, in the world of art supplies, you might already know that $63 for 10 tubes of paint isn't really that bad. But for anyone just starting their art journey, this price can be really intimidating. So maybe Arteza would be a better option for you. But before you choose, let's see how they perform. Today I'll be painting something small since we're doing two of them and it's just a little scene based off of food signs we saw when we were in Osaka. Now what I wanted to do was start with a lighter wash in the background and build up opaque layers. So what I'm doing here in the background is trying to create kind of a gradient effect by laying white onto the bottom of the paper and then while it's still wet I will come in with some blue from the top. Also, just so you notice, I kept a little bottle of whichever gouache I was using at the top of the shot, kind of to keep myself organized while editing, but also so that you would know throughout the video because I will be switching back and forth a lot. Here you can see, especially towards the bottom left hand side of the painting, that it looks a bit streaky. By that I mean you can really see those brush strokes. And now we're going to do the same exact process with the Windsor Newton gouache. I feel like even with this first layer, you can already see how much flatter this gouache looks, as if the pigment is just mixing with the water better and just ends up looking more even. So here are the two paintings side by side again, Arteza on the left and Winsor & Newton on the right. To me it looks like we got more of that graded wash look we were going for with the Arteza, but the layer on the Winsor & Newton painting looks a lot more flush. 
Now I've mixed a purple to go in and do some shading with. Everyone does this part differently, whether you start with lighter areas and build up to darker or vice versa, but I wanted to play around with mixing white into the shaded areas that I already blocked in to try and give this some dimension. And now we're going to do the same exact process again with our Windsor & Newton gouache. I've mixed the purple for the shading, but as you can see, the tone of it came out pretty different. I think because the Windsor set is primary, they all just have a bit more of a cool undertone to them. But yeah, this purple even made my paint water cup kind of pretty. Then after a little coffee break, it was time to move on to our yellows and reds. For the sign, I wanted to create kind of a glowing effect, so I put yellow on the edges and started adding more water and white pigment to the paint as I moved inward. Here's the Windsor Newton, and as you can see, even when I'm trying to blend the colors on the paper, it all just comes out really flush, which actually makes sense because I think when people use gouache, this is kind of the look they're going for. The Artezas have a bit more of the consistency of watercolor, whereas Windsor Newtons kind of look more like acrylics when they dry. You really want to stack the colors with the Windsor Newtons rather than blend them as I was trying to do here. But I think that flat look they give is actually pretty cool, and if it works for your style, these are a good option. 
In these next clips, you can see how much warmer the Arteza red is than the primary red from the Windsor & Newton pack. So that is kind of my fault for not using a better matching red, I suppose, but I think this vermilion red from Arteza was the closest match I had to it. Now, at this point, the sun was setting and my natural light was changing, so I had to switch up the camera angle. But I actually think this angle is a bit nicer, and I might be filming more future videos like this. Here we are just adding in some finishing details before I lose light, and here are our finished paintings. Overall, I think you can clearly see the differences in quality, but I also think Arteza held up strong for such a steep price difference between these two options. So I think if you're just beginning your journey with gouache and want to experiment with something, these are a great option to start with. Maybe you're still exploring what colors you wanna work most with, and the variety offered in their packs is a great chance to play around with finding your palette. And I mean, ironically, I got the Windsor & Newton set first, but ever since I started buying Arteza's, I've stuck with them. So that's saying something. On the other hand, if you want that certain look from gouache that you can see here in the Windsor Newton painting, I think these are worth the splurge. You can do a lot with the primary set and then just replace individual bottles as you go. I honestly forgot how nice these were to paint with, and if you look closely, you can see that this painting almost has like a plasticity to it. Whereas when the Arteza paints dried on the paper, they look a bit more chalky. If you're set on either of these paint packs, I'll have my Amazon affiliate links in the description box below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one. Bye!